Hello world and happy new year. I hope that 2021 will be a year full of health, self-improvement and a step closer to excellence as software engineers. In a previous video, we mentioned the concept of composition over inheritance and as promised, today's video will be dedicated to finding out exactly what we mean by that. This is a concept that is universally accepted by software engineers and is rarely fought, which is hard to find in our industry. However, I have found that there's often quite a bit of confusion around the concept as it gets dragged to the extreme, sometimes sounding like inheritance is the worst thing and composition is always the answer. As with everything in life, this is not a one-size-fits-all situation. Furthermore, we will see that Kotlin is a language that encourages composition and makes inheritance just one small step more verbose. And I will show you what is, in my opinion, the best Kotlin way to apply the concept in action, leveraging some pretty cool language features. The idea of composition over inheritance has been covered in multiple books and resources, and one of them is Joshua Block's Effective Java. In this book, item 18 is called Favor Composition Over Inheritance, and then item 19 follows up with Design and Document for Inheritance, or else prohibited. As you can see, it's clear that composition is generally favored, but that does not mean that inheritance is forbidden. We should still use inheritance as long as we explicitly designed our classes for it. With great power comes great responsibility. Inheritance is a powerful tool. This means that in order to use it, you have to be very careful. It can give you high gains as it offers you inherited functionality for free, but that contains high risk. Okay, fair enough. We need high risk, high gains stuff in our life sometimes. But can we see an example that shows us what could be so dangerous about inheritance? I can hear you thinking. Well, if you've been following my videos, you know by now that this is exactly how I like to explain everything. So let's face the danger of inheritance in a controlled environment. So in our application for today, the product manager has asked us to create a dog. The dog can bark and eat. All right, and as you can imagine, this would not be a good application if there were no cats. So we were asked to add a cat that can meow and also eat. We can immediately see the duplication in the eat method. And we have been learning from our computer science degrees and courses that this is bad. So the most probable way to solve this would be to have a base animal class. So let me just go ahead and add that. But the moment I try to inherit from it, this error pops up. Welcome to Kotlin's first feature of helping us not abuse inheritance. Every class by default is final, which means we need the special keyword open in front of the class keyword to let us extend it. Nice one, Kotlin, whereas Java is the opposite. You need to explicitly define a class as final. And from experience, developers don't do it as much as they should. So back to our example, we added the open keyword and now both cat and dog are animals and we are happy. Then our manager asks us to create two robots in the ecosystem, one for cleaning, one for feeding. Duplication again on the drive method so we just go ahead and create a simple robot class to handle every base robot's functionality. Now, once you look at that, isn't that pretty clean and nice? It even gives you a warm feeling inside from a student learning about inheritance years ago to actually using it at work. Surely feels great. Our professors would be proud. Then your product owner, manager, or whatever comes to you and says, we need to add a little something to our ecosystem. Our users love the application, and the most requested feature is that we need a cleaning robot dog. A cleaning robot dog. Hmm, this hierarchy now does not look so good. The cleaning robot dog will need to bark, clean, and also drive, but it has no need to eat. So we cannot inherit from two different classes either. Inheritance has locked us. We could try to fiddle around and add another superclass, but it's clearly a hack that will become a burden down the line. We are stuck. 
but we were happy 10 seconds ago. How could it be that we're now sad? Because we thought that we knew what the classification of the classes would be. We made a classification error, but it's natural. We cannot know the future of a class's evolution a priori unless we have created them for the specific region of inheritance and we are sure of what we're doing. That's why we need proper system design. We need to keep our options open. Inheritance, unfortunately, does the opposite. It's very rigid. It acts as a contract that is hard to break. It gets set early on in your design and it probably will remain until the end. And the more you add features and methods, the tighter the coupling becomes. The tighter the coupling, the more you add features because you subliminally need to reason your initial choice. It's in our nature not to like being wrong and changing opinions. And of course, when we design for inheritance, what do we mean? We have followed the list of substitution principle, of course, link of which will be linked down below. I'm sure this seemed a little scary. I told you it's dangerous, but the good news is that it can be avoided by opting for composition. So what is composition exactly? And why in computer science degrees or object-oriented courses, we mostly learn about inheritance and we rarely hear about composition? Well, the answer to that is that you actually hear about composition all the time. It's just not apparent that this is what composition is about. It's the concept of a class referencing instances of other objects. Every class basically does that. This is composition. Class A containing a variable B of class B. A is composed by B and it could be composed by dozens of other instances, either created inside or passed as constructor arguments. That's why we remember inheritance that much more, because composition is even more basic. It's nothing more than what most classes actually are. So when we say, instead of doing this, class, child, inheriting from parent, you should do this, class, child, having a parent variable. So child has access to parent's methods through the parent instance variable, instead of it being a parent. This gets us the same functionality, but now we are not coupled to a single inherited class. So how can we be sure? When do we use the one over the other? Well, a general rule is to think of the relationship as either a has a or an is a relationship. If it is a is a, then most likely inheritance will be okay. If it's a has a relationship, then composition is your best bet. But I must say that I'm not a fan of this rule. While it's okay, it fails at some edge cases. And as professional engineers, we need to be ready for those cases. An edge case could be the above example with the dog and the cat. They are indeed animals. I mean, a dog is an animal, a cat is an animal. So they have an is a relationship. But in the end, and the crazy product manager told you to create a robot dog, that's when your whole notion of reality broke down. So use inheritance when you are absolutely certain that you know the whole context of the software, how it will evolve and what its limits are. But this is really hard. That's why you need to document and design for inheritance or else prohibit it. You need to be in control from the beginning and figure out whether inheriting is a good fit for your use case. When in doubt, use composition. We will see the composition version of our ecosystem, but first, let's talk about Kotlin. Kotlin is a great language for composition. It basically leads us there by default, and this is the point of the concept, to pick composition by default, but only use inheritance when you are absolutely certain of it. So the first feature is the keyword open that we saw previously, that all classes are final by default, and that means close for inheritance. In order to be able to subclass them, we need to define them as open, which is the first good barrier into helping developers make a conscious decision about inheritance. In Java, you could extend all classes unless you declare them as final. Kotlin reverses that and says that you can extend nothing unless you declare it as open. That's a cool design choice. Next is the object keyword. This creates 
a single instance of the declared class in the compiler. This will act as a tool to use with the third and last keyword, my favorite, the keyword by. Now, the first time I saw that, I was really impressed as it gets intuitive fast and then works like magic. We can basically have a class implement an interface and then we can use that class as an instance of our class, achieving composition in the declaration itself with zero boilerplate code. Now let's see how they all come together. Back to our initial scenario, manager comes and tries to ruin our day by announcing that we need to implement a cleaning robot dog. All right then, I guess this hybrid thing would need to be a cleaner, a drivable, and a barker. If we were to go with a composition route, it's a good idea to split our functionality in interfaces that we can implement. So we would need three interfaces for this example. There they are. These need implementation, of course, but since we will probably need more than one of them to compose functionalities, then the keyword object comes to play. We're going to create three objects in order to reuse in different classes. They could be classes, of course, but I like using objects for things that I do not need to create multiple instances of and contain simple functionality that will remain the same. We can see that we implemented the interfaces using those objects. And now the magic of Kotlin is about to shine. Our cleaning robot dog class will look like that. Boom. Nothing else. The by keyword allows us to implement the interface through a realization from a different class, our objects. Are you impressed? Instead of implementing the interfaces again and again, we can create those objects that implement the composed behaviors and then we can use them to compose our classes. No inheritance needed. To recap, favor composition over inheritance whenever there is no specific reason to go for inheritance. This keeps your classes more flexible and modifiable. Use composition, leveraging the by keyword of Colton for minimum boilerplate code. But please do not lose track of the basics. That composition is simply referencing other instances of objects. Keywords and automations in modern programming languages are nothing more than conveniences and not a reason not to understand and grasp what happens behind the scenes. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.